I'm Tiffany Pyatt and I'm a first grade teacher at Heller Elementary and I've taught first grade for six years now. I'm working to incorporate agriculture in my classroom using the Flat Aggie project and working with my partner. Good morning, I'm Nicole Small. I'm a farmer and rancher near Neotache, Kansas. And I'm also a blogger, the author of Tales of a Kansas Farm Mom. Uh, I met Nicole my second year teaching when I had her son and Nicole approached me about the idea of using Flat Aggie um, in the classroom to promote agriculture and to get the kids learning about agriculture in different states. So Nicole is the legs to our Flat Aggie project that we use monthly in our classroom and she does that through her blog. Um, she sends out reports to farms across the nation and so far we've reached quite a few farms. <laughs> We still have a few states to go, but we've been from Canada to New Hampshire. We've did lima beans, honeybees, a mushroom farm. We've even did almonds in California and cotton, as well as corn, soybeans, wheat, cattle, dairy, and beef. And so this project has been really a good one for um, the elementary classroom, just because we don't find a lot of time to get to our science and social studies um, as much as we'd like to. So this project is allowing us um, to have a, it's, it takes a short amount of time to get a lot, a big bang for our buck when it comes to um, science and social studies, as well as incorporating language arts and math um, through those projects. Nicole um, helps out with some math questions that go along with each um, report. And then she, has another blogger friend that actually helps out um, with the reports um, and getting us lots of information about each topic. Yeah, Katie Pratt, that is um, known as the Illinois Farm Girl online, writes an all about each um, subject page to give additional resources and online resources and books that they can use in the classroom as well. So we're here today and <coughs> hope to, we hope to reach more teachers and more kids to get the word out about agriculture. Hey, I'm Clark Victory. I grew up right here on this little ranch near Chelsea, Oklahoma. Uh, roped and ranched all my life. And uh, a few years ago, I had an injury that created a what they call a frozen shoulder in layman's terms. It got to the point that I, I couldn't reach, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything. After speaking with the surgeon in Tulsa, he finally told me that he could make my uh, shoulder better if he did surgery, but he absolutely couldn't fix it. I decided that you know, maybe I better listen to my friend John. And, and I called Kansas Regenerative Medical Center. I talked to Patrick Farley and was just excited about the whole aspect of going up there and having the opportunity to focus on getting better. The next morning at 8.30, went into the clinic, did the stem cell replacement. By 12.30, my wife and I had had lunch and was driving back to Chelsea. I feel better. I, we work around here. Some days we work pretty hard around here. And like any older guy does, I get pretty sore, pretty tired. but. My right shoulder doesn't get sore, it's, it's like a baby's arm. Soil is the life of a farm. And for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Ag AM in Kansas brought to you in part by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Hello and welcome to Horsing Around. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. Today we're going to talk about traveling with your horse and things to be thinking about when you're with your horse or going down the road or even stopping. You know, there's a lot of different <clears throat> variabilities that you have to be thinking about when it comes to traveling with your horses. Obviously the safety of your trailer and making sure it is equipped properly for a safe ride of your horse and yourself while going down the road. The other thing to be thinking about is just temperature, uh, other drivers, uh, horses and how they may be affected by 
uh, uh, other vehicles going by, uh, even semis, you know, some horses can get fairly scared. And so understanding what if a horse does something in a trailer, trying to prevent any issues within there is going to be important. Another thing to probably keep in mind is whether you should tie your horse up within the trailer while going down the road. Now all that is dependent on the trailer and the horse and the distance of the ride <clears throat> that you're going to be in the trailer. So all those things in consideration and how high you, could, you should tie your horse is something also about safety. Remember about a, a foot uh, to two feet max as far as laxity within that uh, lead rope if you're going to tie it. So one, it's not too loose where they could get a leg or something trapped in it. Or two, they're too tight where they could bang their head up against there and not have the motion or freedom to move their head slightly one way or the other. Or maybe if they have any hay that's in there uh, that they have access to that hay. And if the hay net would potentially cause any concerns of safety where they could get their leg or even head stuck in that is something also to keep in mind and to be thinking about when you're going down the road to prevent those kind of problems. The other thing about a slant load trailer is they usually have windows or drop down windows that are in the front of that uh, horse uh, as you're going down the road or even when you're stopped. I think going or stopping at certain places, dropping those windows down could be helpful for ventilation and allow the horse to kind of look around but also it depends on the horse and making sure if they're too fractious, some may even try to jump out of that window. So just being concerned with that. A lot of times uh, going down the road, it is sometimes a concern to have those drop down windows open and allowing the horse to stick their head out while going down the road. Those could be a safety concern for the horse for foreign debris that may sling up and hit them, hit them in the eye or the head. Uh, in addition to all the other traffic that may be going by if they have their head stuck out. So there is some things that can be done with those drop down windows where they have different crates or gates that can put over the top of it but still allow for ventilation and may be another aspect of keeping the horse safe while going down the road. The other thing to be thinking about is color of trailer and why would that play a role? Well, in the summer probably here in Kansas or even down south, it can get pretty hot in the trailer. So making sure you have good ventilation, opening up all the windows, all the vents on the top. Remember that while going down the road, it will increase circulation within the trailer, but when you stop, that circulation may decrease. And so making sure that your horse doesn't get too hot within a trailer, maybe while you're going to grab a bite to eat in at a restaurant, is going to be important to be thinking about while you're stopped. In addition, while you are kind of stopped, it would also be great if you'd take your horse out of the trailer, be able to examine them to make sure they don't have any cuts, bruises, or scratches while they were in the trailer. In addition to making sure they're not too hot, and it allows them to kind of lower their head and take a deep breath and get ready to get back in there uh, to go even further down the road. Those brakes are also helpful for decreasing stress of the horse and preventing other respiratory diseases that maybe they may pick up while going down the road. Also, if you're going down the road, don't forget if you go across state lines to always have your health certificate, a current health certificate with that Coggins uh, test and paperwork with you because a lot of states are now stopping trailers and they could stop you and, and quarantine a horse if you don't have the proper paperwork. So talk with your veterinarian and make sure you're ready to go down the road and ready to go down the road safely uh, as you go to different shows, horse uh, trail rides, or even other events throughout the summer. If you have any questions or concerns, talk to your veterinarian or give us a call here at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State and we'll see you around.